Why am I always going through this? Why am I going through so many struggles? I'm a child of God and I should not be going through all of this. Things should be easy for me since I know that I come to Christ. How many of us think this? How many of us think that we should not be suffering or going through anything? Too many of us. Welcome back to Present Truth for Seventh day Adventists. My name is Sister Cherry and today we're going to talk about trials and how valuable it is. and Herod, February the 7th, 1893. It tells us in the great conflict between faith and unbelief, the whole Christian world will be involved. All will take sides. Some apparently may not engage in the conflict on either side. They may not appear to take side against the truth, but they will not come out boldly for Christ through fear of losing property, all suffering reproach, all such are numbered with the enemy of Christ. This is our, our opening thought. This is what I want us to think about. How trials fit in here. Peter had a good insight on these questions and he left this counsel for us. Turn your books to 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. Beloved, beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happen unto you. But rejoice, verse 13 said, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So we, are, so we are being told here by Peter, take not these things as strange, but rejoice. When you're being, when you're suffering for the cause of Christ, when you as a Christian is suffering, when you have done all that you can, rejoice. This is what we are told. This is how valuable trial is, that when it comes, we have to rejoice. And we're going to find out why we have to rejoice. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for everything that you have done for us. As we're about to go into this session, we ask the Lord that you please be with us. Come in among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice. Trials come in different forms and shapes to God's people. And they come in unexpected ways from unexpected sources. But why do we need trials? They come to make us partakers of his glory, as we read before in Peter. Trials come to make us partakers of Christ's glory. We, we are told that they come in different forms. And not also they come in different forms, but from unexpected sources. So who you think or what you think might not bring you great suffering that may cause you to go through this trial is what it might come from. We don't know where or what is our next trial. But we know we are going to be tried all the time and that being tried is very good for us. If it makes us partakers of Christ's glory, then be happy to be tried. Pray to God, ask him to try you, give you trial. You just have to ask him to give you the strength to go through the trials. Because many of us want to be partakers of Christ's glory without going through first the suffering. But we must suffer first before we can partake of Christ's glory. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that Perishing. It is much more precious than gold that perishing. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So our trials is compared to gold. And we know persons today who have gold, how much they 
protects it and keeps it safe and they, how valuable it is to them. That is how trial is to us. So when we are tried, when we are going through suffering, we must rejoice. Let us not complain. Great Controversy tells us in page 621, paragraph 1, The assaults of Satan are fierce and determined. His delusions are terrible, but the Lord's eye is upon his people and his ears listen to their cries. The affliction is great. The flames of the furnace seems to seem about to consume them, but the refiner will break them for as gold tried in fire. God love for his children during the period of the severe trial is as strong as and tender as in the days of their sunniest prosperity. But it is needful for them to be placed in the furnace of fire. Their earthliness must be consumed, that the image of Christ may be perfectly reflected. These are why we go to trials. We need to lose sight of earthly things because we are told all the time that the only thing that we're going to leave the earth with is our character. We are not going with our property and all that we owe or whatever we value so much in this life. So when things happen to us, thank God. Thank God. We are in a world of suffering. Difficulty, trial and sorrow awaits us. All along the way to the heavenly home. So what awaits us? Difficulty, trial, and sorrow. At the beginning? No. At the end? No. All along the way. So every step of the way, we are going to be, we are going to meet the trials. If you overcome today, tomorrow you must overcome too. Tomorrow's trials are with you. But there are many who make life's burden doubly heavy by continual anticipating trouble. If they meet with adversity or disappointment, they think that everything is going to ruin, that theirs is the hardest lot of all that they are surely coming to want. Do you feel this way? Well, we shouldn't. When we are meet with life's difficulty, God has assured us that he has not left us. We can overcome. We can get through this with the help of our Savior. That is why he came to die. Not just on the cross and then leave you at the rest of the way. He is with you every step of the way. God, in his great love, is seeking to develop in us the precious graces of his spirit. He permits us to encounter obstacles persecution and hardship not as a curse but as the greatest blessing of our lives every temptation resisted every trial bravely born gives us new experience and advance, advances us in the work of character building so brothers and sisters anyone who's listening to me pray for it if it does this to you, if it gives us a new experience and advances us in the work of character building, pray for trials. Don't be afraid. God is with you. But while we are not to be dismayed by trial, bitter though it be, we should pray that God will not permit us to be brought where we shall be drawn away by the desires of our own evil hearts. In offering the prayer that Christ has given, we surrender ourselves to the guardians of God, asking him to lead us into safe paths. This should be our prayer all throughout the day, that whatever we do, that God will lead us to safe path, that we, will, we may not be overcome with our evil hearts. Our heart is desperately wicked, and every step of the way we need a guidance of God. Romans 5 3 says, and not only so, 
but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Romans 5 4. And patience experience and experience hope. Verse 5 says, And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And this is plain, brothers and sisters. Whatever we are going through, however hard it may be, know that you're not alone. And this is for your good. So rejoice. When hardship happens, rejoice. We are told to examine this text closely. The text that we just read. We are to examine it closely. Observe that tribulation give us patience as we work through what? Our trials. Thus gaining an experience that produce hope that will not make us ashamed. Notice that however hard the trial and temptations are for us to bear, we gain an experience that gives us hope. And the hope we have will never make us ashamed because of God's love in our hearts, which the Holy Spirit has given us. Brothers and sisters, when trials come, rejoice. Many acts, says the servant of the Lord. Many ask the Lord to humble them, but are unwilling to submit to the needful discipline. When the test come, when trials or even annoyances occur, the heart rebels and the tongue utters words that are like poison arrow of blasted hail. So when we ask God to humble us and the trials come our way, we need to be disciplined so that when they come, it will not be the result of uttering words that is going to hurt others and even hurt ourselves. We are told that it is natural for the heart to rebel. But when on the discipline, when on the discipline, the experience becomes different. When you're in God's care and in his control, never say the devil did this or that, regardless what it be. For he can do nothing except he is allowed to do it. Always give God the credit. Always give God the credit. Whatever experience you may be going through, whether it's on the work, whether it's in your home, whether it's in the, anywhere, anywhere you go, whatever your experience is, thank God for it. Don't say the devil. We often say, you see what the devil makes me do? A lot of us say that. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, said the psalmist. But now have I kept thy word. So affliction is good. Affliction is good. We have characters to form here. God will test us and prove us by placing us in position to develop the most enduring strength. Purity and nobility of soul. With perfect patience on our part and entire trust in a crucified Savior, we shall meet with reverses of fiction and severe, severe trials, for these are God's tests. For these are God's tests. He will sift, he will sit as a refiner, a purifier of silver, Purge his people as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Whether you are tempted, don't give the enemy the credit. Whatever your experience is, give God the credit. You're told, yield not to the temptation. Whatever 
it be. Yield not. This is our closing thought. Heaven would be cheap enough if we obtain it through suffering. We must deny self all along the way. Die to self daily. Let Jesus alone appear and keep his glory continually in view. I saw that those who are off late have embraced the truth would have to know what it is to suffer for Christ's sake. That they would have trials to pass through that would be keen and cutting in order that they may be purified and fitted through suffering to receive the seal of the living God. So how are you going to receive the seal of the living God? Not just by studying, but by going through trials also. When you're afflicted, when you're suffering, when you have tried, all these things prepare you to receive the seal. It is essential. It is in a, in Inevitable. It says, Pass through the time of trouble, see the king in his beauty, and dwell in the presence of God and of pure and holy angel. These are the things that we will have to experience. So, in order for you to enjoy your suffering and your trial, you have to die to self. You cannot have that experience except you die to self. And let God be put in the view. This is what we are told. If we are going to go through what we are to go through and make it to the end to be sealed because that's what we all want to do. This is an essential part. So let us close in prayer as we ask the Lord to help us. Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for your word, for your words of wisdom, showing us that if we are going to be seen, Suffering is going to be a part of what we experience. Help us, the Lord, to go through it without murmuring and complaining. Help us to rejoice. We pray for these trials and we ask you to help us to bear them. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming by and for listening. Please remember to subscribe, like, and leave an encouraging comment for others. Bye.